audience. My name is John Goliatino. I'm your host. Uh, this evening, we're going to be talking to our uh, city council people from the Fifth Ward. Uh, with me, uh, Freddie Visconti and uh, Dwayne Perkins. And uh, you'll, we'll have an in, in, informative show for you. Uh, welcome to the show. John, thank you. Thanks for having us. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself before we get into questions. Uh, okay. We've done shows before, and uh, there's always people coming and going, so the, there may be people that don't know you very well. That's, that's the hard part, don't know <laughs> yourself. I've been uh, in Danbury all my life. Uh, went to St. Peter's School, graduated from Danbury High, uh, worked around here, there, and about everywhere, and, and uh, decided I wanted to uh, be a career firefighter. I uh, was able to do that, and I were, did 30 years of service, uh, and I have no regrets about doing that. Happily married to my wife Mary, and uh, daughters Michelle and Amy and Jimmy and David. I have a granddaughter, a grandson, and a six-year-old great-granddaughter. Uh, been on the council since 2003. I was going to ask you what possessed you to get on the council. <laughs> 2003 yeah. is a few years. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it's been a good run. I look forward to it. Uh, it's a lot of work, of course, when you got to run again. It's a lot of work when, when you're not running again. Uh, times but, change. But you enjoy. Yeah, yeah. times change, and uh, we have a lot more things going on. Uh, but. Uh, Dwayne and I are there, and I think we do a good job for everybody. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Dwayne? Thanks, John. Uh, same as Fred for the most part, long-term long uh, Danbury guy, uh, born and raised through all the public school systems here in, in the city, um, off to college, started off at Mattituck, which is now Naugatuck Valley Community College, where I actually work. Uh, and then You're a professor there, right? Yes, yeah. yes. And then off to uh, Northeastern University up in Boston. Had a good time up there uh, to, to get my bachelor's degree. And then on to University of Bridgeport for my master's. Uh, worked across a few different industries. Ended up as an educator, like we just mentioned. So I've been at Naugatuck Valley Community College for several years now. And uh, we're looking to um, you know, wind a career down um, in, in a short amount of time. I've uh, been on the council since 2005, Fred's got me by another term, and uh, we're always looking forward to, to our campaigns. Uh, proud father of three lovely daughters, um, my youngest of which is in law school, so we're looking wow. forward to her uh, getting out of there and starting to serve her So, so we well. may have a future councilwoman. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah. All right, very good. I may say uh, yeah, a go couple ahead. things I'd just like to add on there. Uh, I became interested in, in being a firefighter. I spent almost 10 years at the Worcester Hose Company down at Cope Hill, and that was really great. I'm still an uh, honorary member there. Uh, and I've been the chairperson for St. Peter's Church Council for the entire parish for about the last six or seven years. And between that and, and the city council, uh, yeah, your, your hands are full. Yeah, but I get, I, if I don't do something wrong on the council, I get blessed by the church councils. <laughs> but I just wanted to add that in there. Thank you. Yeah, well, people appreciate the service because yeah. if you're not doing it, sometimes there's nobody else there or That's, somebody or okay. people are saying, well, maybe in three years I'll do that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> they don't even make it sound like in a right. year they'll do that. But, yeah. Time so, flies. yeah, time it's just, it's, it's crazy, it really is. But if you weren't doing that, what, what else would you be doing? You know, you'd be fishing maybe uh, and saying, no, how I'd be boring. Doing, I'd be doing the lawn. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the lawn, the yeah. laundry, yeah, the, the, laundry. Uh, the, the, the uh, whatever, painting the, the house. Yep. Complaining more about what's going on. Yeah. So we might as well be part you of go, it. You go down, make the yeah. best contributions we can and sit around watching. Yeah, no, that's, that. that's, a, that's the thing about being involved in public service is uh, when you're involved, then you can actually do something about it. Yeah. To a certain degree. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we, we, uh, we seem to be able to do that pretty well. T uh, tell us some of the challenges. You're going to be going for re-election uh, uh, you know, shortly, but in the meanwhile, maybe you can give us a report on the, the past uh, period of time that you've been in there. Uh, you know, some of the things, uh, I, I'm not sure about what your committees are since it's been a while since you've been here, but um, you know, talk about the committees you served on. and. That sort of thing, you know. Maybe starting with Freddie. Um. Uh, <laughs> wow. Um, I came on, like I said, in 2003 on the council, 
and uh, it was probably about a year or so after that that the the mayor uh, asked me if I would like to be the liaison between the city council and the board of education and I've always been involved I was a PTA president down at South Street School for six years and I sort of kept up little by little as what was going on so I have been doing that uh, since probably 2004 or something along that line uh, which also keeps you busy it was a lot especially now um, and then he really surprised me one night at, at, at a meeting he, he appointed me to the uh, uh, be the auditor audit committee uh, chairman of the audit, audit committee for the council uh, as a liaison to the finance director and uh, I really enjoy that uh, with David's working with David St. Hilaire on the, on the uh, budget and uh, the audit committee comes in we have a, an organization that does that and uh, we meet four or five times a year plus David and I talk on the phone quite a bit uh, so that you're discussing uh, we're discussing uh, Board of Ed money okay, okay. Uh, the, uh, we, we concentrate on that also on the the pension fund uh, we make sure that there's that everything is going right there, and it is. We're it's fully funded. Or fully closed. funded, and yeah. or, and uh, that's important. Fund, wow, that you have a fully f funded uh, pension fund. What, fund, I mean. Right. When you read what what happened up in Hartford, Danbury is in very very good shape. Uh, that's good to know. Yeah, the, the the finance office does a great job, but we do talk about that. And as I said, the the uh, education funding, we do the best we can with that too. Uh, those are the two big, uh, big things that uh, you really have to keep an eye on, and I report back to the mayor and uh, sometimes to the council if need be. So uh, keeps me busy. Right, you know. and, you're, and you're you're like a double check on what they're doing. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Because after you know, yeah. after all, it is it is the administration, and and that's yeah. what the city council's job is. You're like the board of directors of a corporation. You it is. It is. Keep, People, keep track of uh, what yeah. they're doing and. Yep. If you if you see a deficiency, you you point it out. You People know. don't realize that once you get on the council. Uh, I remember when, when Dwayne and I first started. Uh, they always said, "Oh yeah, it's only one meeting a month." You know, okay. Yeah, right. That, that ended <laughs> real quick. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, it's more we, like we more busy. like four nights a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Budget time is the worst time. Yeah. That's when you really have to to sit down and, and work things out. But it. So far, I think we've done a pretty good job. Well, that's good. Your turn. It's <laughs> <laughs> Wayne, same, same question. Uh, well, committees yeah. that you've been involved with, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> Excuse me. Um, well, if, even before the committee thing, I, I think one, one of the things that uh, attracts us to this whole council thing is our, our handling uh, neighborhood issues. I mean, uh, just recently I received an email from one of the constituents about Basically, the beavers are back, real beavers with flat tails and the big teeth, building these dams. The thing is, is that it wants to flood out, you know, personal property. So you have to, you know, take the proper steps and the proper course of action in order to rectify this thing. I mean, there's special permits that you have to pull if it's during a certain time. Do you have a branch of the Still special. River over there? Or, or, uh, you got the, yeah, okay. It runs right through to uh, Richfield. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, so that's a thing, you know. So um, if they're putting erecting barriers in there, you're going to have flooding. <laughs> yeah, and and you can't just bring a guy in a boat. You have to bring heavy equipment in to get those things out because they're very very fortified. Right. So those are some of the things. Um, committees. Um, I'm on just general government one. You know, we handle a lot of the different types of um, parts of the budget for the um, council. Um, you know, so. Primary neighborhood issues are, are the biggest driver. You don't have as many life. sewer issues like you no, used we to. We do have some sewer issues right now. Because I, mean, I, <laughs> during my during my time there, I, I I don't know how many sewer committees I was on. <laughs> well, yeah, you know what? We we put those on uh, consent, so oh. we don't have to deal with a lot. So of that kind of you stuff don't have anymore. as many as you used to. Yeah. That made the number of uh, ad hoc meetings go down drastically. Oh, okay. We were always going to approve Yeah, those they seem to be, perp you know, perpetuity. It had, but uh, the big thing now are the, the, the discharge in the, um, yeah. the, the MS4, was it municipal? MS4, water. Storm it's, water yeah, system or something? Storm water. Yeah. It's a new ordinance that we're, uh, we're going to have to be working on. We have a public hearing 
on it uh, on the 17th. Was it federally motivated? motivated? Yes, federally yeah. and state. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's two of them out there. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, I don't want to say we're forced to do it, but we have to. We have to take. Well, the there's a compliance. You, you, yeah, you, the compliance. you do it however you'd like to yeah. do it within a certain uh, uh, yeah. range of, uh, of compliance. But there's uh, a few things in there yeah. that uh, you know you have some problems with, but we're able to discuss it and work our way around it. You either vote uh, yes or no on it, but it doesn't make any difference because if we fail to, to do anything with it. We're going to get fined a lot of money, wow. so it's something that has to be done, and, but we want to do it the right way, and that's how, you know, Dwayne and I work all the time. We want to make sure that uh, it's done so that everybody seems to be happy about it. But yeah, uh, you know. if something's going to disrupt people too much, then you're going to have nah, nothing. You know. Yeah, like I said, we're going to have a uh, next Monday, I think it is, uh, the 17th, yeah, and uh, at seven o'clock, City Hall. There's a public hearing on it. And then after the public hearing, we meet as a committee as the whole, and then we bring it back to the next council meeting and, and uh, vote one way or the other on it. All so right. if people want to come out or they have questions, that's the time to come. Okay. Yes. So we're roughly a week in advance, but we, this will uh, air on time for that. You know, it'll be airing, uh, uh, I believe, Thursday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because like I said, there's, there's two of those types of things out there. One's called... Uh, for the uh, illicit discharge and the other ones, they, they put an acronym on it, uh, MS4. And what does that stand for again? Municipal Separate Stormwater Sewer System. Okay. I think I got that right. All right. But the biggest problem with that, at least for, uh, in our opinion, is that let's just say you went by the rules, you pulled the proper permits from the city, you know, you hired the vendors and they did a fabulous job. This thing goes into effect. All that stuff's illegal now. All right. So, how do you how do you explain that to somebody who's already had that kind of work done that this could make all that work? In, in other words, the, the feds have said this is the, these are the standards. You have to do this, this, and this, well, and this yeah. is nationwide as opposed to uh, what would existed before. They can is say that, that, that but yeah. I, I think that they that we need to be allowed to have a little bit more flexibility within that language because to have it exist as th that seems very problematic. At least, at least it from, makes a lot of people from a homeowner's perspective. Yeah, that it's going to make a lot of people that did the right thing at the time they did it. So, now exactly. they they have to correct and spend more money. So how does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, it might have been on a on a bad day that they passed that, and they weren't really thinking of uh, of that, or just thinking the majority of people in the country didn't do it in the first place, and not thinking about the places where they actually did it. You know, they yeah. did something, you know, as opposed to nothing. So anyway, that's yeah. that's one of the things. Uh, any other issues that are um, uh, you know discerning uh, that you hear from your clients, your, your clients, your um, constituents? Well, we um, just went through the uh, the whole city budget you know that's always a challenge that's probably the most challenging thing out of, of, out of being on the whole council you know just taking all those limited resources just trying to divvy them out over all of those different types of organizations and departments that need funds I mean, that's very stressful right. has, has anything been done about the roads because I hear that all the time things are being done traveling. about the roads uh, you, you, things are being done about the roads. Okay, the, you, you passed something to actually work on Drain the roads. systems. I because mean, we just floated some bonds. I think we were dealing with a little over three something million. I think it was. I think you're, you're, I think it was two point seven or two point five or two. But there, there are already funds 7. in the account. A little over yeah. three, um, and we've been rolling that kind of money forward for a while. It's it's hard getting on top of the roads with these tough New England winters. Um, but one thing I'd like to say, though, I wanted to try to get a, a more of a discussion with the department to just use better systems, uh, maybe different types of methods, not just milling and asphalt, but maybe, you know, well, chip seal and sealing cracks and things like that for preservation of roads. And there's, there's also, it's been said that uh, the uh, snow removing uh, substances, oh, the, material? uh, the materials that are being used, like it's not really just salt that's uh, things that uh, corrode a lot faster or destroy the roads a lot faster, and uh, some that something that. Some, something should be done about that. Not only is it doing a job on the roads, but it's also doing a job on people's cars. People's cars. It's, uh, it's been brought up as an issue uh, uh, 
I know I, I, I talked with the uh, with Mr. Iderola at the head of the Public Works, and he he is like probably the last two or three years he's used different substances and you know this and that and everything. But it's hard; it really is, especially now with the way the weather is. You just can't tell what's going to happen around here anymore because of climate change. climate change. You know, <laughs> <laughs> the climate change that we don't have. Climate change that we don't have, <laughs> according supposedly. to some people. But I'll tell you what: when you look at yeah. what's going on around the country, something's wrong somewhere, and it, it makes it hard. It really does. Uh, we, we've got a lot of roads that, that that they do take care of as much as they can, and uh, I think they do a heck of a job for the winter. The, the most of the, the snowstorms we're, we're having now is you get a double whammy, uh, rain and freezing rain and ice and, you know, it's not, the, the snowstorms don't seem to be like they used to, used to be where you get a blizzard or something like that. That's not happening anymore. It's, it's a different situation. And it makes it hard on the cities to be able to, to do the right process and use the right stuff to, to, to clear everything out. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was just going to say, as far as the roads uh, to continue, we uh, hire a contractor to come in and, and fill potholes. We fill potholes. But I would just like to say to the people listening, if you ever have a concern that deals with anything on the roads or any other kind of issue, use the 311 system. Just yeah. send an email to 311. Yep. I and think people um, forget about that, but the, it's, the, the, it's very valuable. It's a, it's a really, really I've used good, it a couple of times it's myself. A, it's a really good system, and it puts everything into a queue. You know, you can tabulate all of the data. You, you know how many potholes are getting filled. You know all different types of calls that are going to that particular um, system. I mean, it's like it's a really good system. It's a really good tool. And they do get back to you with you a reasonable get, yeah. amount yes, of time. And, and um, it's almost like, I mean, I, I call potholes in all the time because I don't want people to hit them. I, yeah. mean, I, I know I don't want to hit them. Yeah, and when you almost hit one, then you're going to say, hey, let me call this one in. You know, I just, I just, <laughs> I just call it in. If yeah. I don't do it when I stop, I, I do it when I get home. Yes. Now, now, now we can get stuck in that rut for a while there. So we let's let's sort of uh, no pun intended, but uh, let's move along. Yeah. Uh, um, as an educator, what do you think about the um, uh, the amount of monies that are being spent on education in the city of Danbury? Uh, it's been said, and I don't. I, I'm not in a position where I spend time checking things out, but that, you know, uh, we're not very high in uh, the amount of money we're spending on, uh, on education uh, here in the city of Danbury as opposed to uh, other cities in the uh, state. I'm not going to say what I heard, which was something radical, just just say that we're, uh, we're behind most of the larger cities, let's put yeah, well, it that I way. Yeah, I think what you're talking about is that ECS, the education cost sharing uh, formula. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's wacky. And we don't get our fair share. You, you've heard that many times over. I'm glad people are finally starting to listen, okay? Because it's not on the council. It's part of Hartford. All right. You got people wanting to. It's that formula. Yeah. yeah. And, okay. and, it, and it's going to be tough to change because you have people putting up votes to take money away from their districts if they pass a, a change in what it is now. I don't know who could fix it. Maybe the governor. I mean, the well, if it's a, a if time. it's a legislature supposed to decide on it, even the governor, it's sort of like a, uh, a groundhog well, day. You know, the same thing keeps happening again and again. Right. But the point yeah. is, it's not a, it's not a, it's not us on the council. Right. So, so I was glad to hear that people are going to be organizing, going to Hartford with the with a, with a similar message. Just keep pounding the table on that. That's the only way it's going to change. Coming in, giving us the business at the council meetings. That's not going to help much. Wow. <laughs> well, you can increase what you do here at the local, but how much can you do when half of the money is supposed to be coming from the state? It's probably not half anymore. It's more like a third, right? It's crazy. <laughs> what it is. What is it, about I would, third? I would have loved every year, again, I get a lot of, a lot of flack from people. I won't go into who, but people. Yeah. Uh, because I am involved with the Board of Ed and, and, and the budget for the Board of Ed, and people say, well, why can't you give us more? We want more. I would love to. I'd love to give the the hundred, uh, the other seven point five million dollars that they wanted this year, but we, we just don't have it. You know, we have so many other things that have to get. We give we give as much as we possibly can, and in the long run, they will get subsidies, grants. You know, that that helps them out down the road. So, 
Um, yeah, a lot of people, yeah. you know, the idealists out there will say, well, we should increase, but they, they don't realize that yeah. the, the have, typical homeowner is pretty moderate. If, uh, if they're comfortable with a certain level of taxation, yeah. a dramatic uh, increase in taxation is going to discomfort them, and, uh, yeah. and then they start to howl, you know. <laughs> you can't, you, can't yeah. you have to stop sooner or later on, on the middle, middle guy because they can only give so much until they reach, when they reach a point where that's it, you yeah. know, and, and that's a trickle down effect. It, it, it trickles down to, uh, do, do they pay the taxes or do they eat do or they get eat? their prescriptions right. or, or give money to the church or whatever, anything, you know, it, and it's sad, but that's unfortunately where the country's coming to. It, it, I, I don't know. And you're getting yeah. this again and again from your uh, constituents. Yeah. yeah, I mean, some of that's common <clears throat> sense too, you know. Yeah. But uh, the, uh, the, when as soon as you're in the position of being homeowner, you have these uh, issues. So it's a whole new ballgame. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, go ahead. Don't, don't forget too the, the whole the whole forecasting of the of the population growth in school districts was was yeah. not exactly on. You know, it was a, a secular shift. People just moving here because of taxes and and the school system and. A lot of other things. You're referring to people coming from place. New York, so, where the taxes so, so, are much more. And right. So the, it, it was just an upward trajectory, and we, we kind of under forecasted it. I, th I think what yeah. what happened here too, and, and Dwayne is is definitely right. But if you look back, we we've been inundated with condos and condos and then more condos. Now they want to put more on Main Street. The Matrix is talking about something up there. You know. Uh, some of them, yeah, there won't be uh, more children involved, but, but a lot of them are, and more more kids to go to the school, more more traffic on the roads, <laughs> you know. There's only got so many people you can fit in here. I think it boils down to the water supply, but they're telling me <laughs> yeah. that the, the water supply, we're, uh, we're, we got more enough water to get us to 100,000 people. But uh, at some point in time, the water supply is going to curtail the growth. Yeah, they were talking some crazy talk about the no, connecting it, municipalities and stuff like that. It was, it was just, it was just blew my mind. You just, you just drive around Danbury during the day or at night, for that matter. It's, a, it's murder. I mean, yeah, the city I've that doesn't never sleep. Seen, I've been here all my life and I've never seen anything like it. The what? city that man. doesn't sleep. Oh, yeah, man. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's some parts of downtown. Sometimes it looks sleepy. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I think I think actually the downtown's kind of quiet because yeah. it people, is. people people work a lot. Yeah. You, you know, you can't be standing out all night making noise on Main Street yeah. or wherever if, if you, you're if working. You get up the next morning. Yeah, yeah, that's true too. So it's it's actually quiet around here a lot. I so, think. So uh, in the last few minutes, here, you, you uh, uh, first of all, let's. Uh, give our telephone number if you want to give that out and uh, your email if anybody out there has questions for you. Um, go. you go, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> it's a little jolt. <laughs> <laughs> he does it under the table too, you gotta watch him. Okay. I'm at, uh, and feel free to call me. I, I, I get a lot of calls anyway, so it's no yeah, big what's deal. A, but what's one more phone two call? Oh, yeah, 203 <laughs> 2311. If nobody's around, leave a message and I definitely will get back to you. I have to get back to a couple of people when I get home, get home tonight. Yeah, email, uh, too. email is uh, Mr. Phone at MSN.com. And that's a long story how I got that, but I won't go into Okay. That. We, we, well, another time. Another time. Yeah. <laughs> Dwayne. Okay. Uh, phone number is area code 203 791 2694. And the email is Dwayne. D U A N E 82 at AOL.com. Okay, very good. We still got about two and a half minutes. So wow. uh, uh, I was going to ask you is there any anything that's uh, any other burning issue aside from the ones we've already discussed? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, you know what? I mean, uh, yeah, the half hour went pretty fast. It's another half hour. Yeah. There, there, there's a, a, a wave of action to get compliance with a lot of different businesses, nail, uh, body care, 
tattoo. It's, it's just a, it's just a wave. A lot of, of licensing issues. Licensing issues that are just yeah. coming on over over these people. And these are all plus enacted. inspection fees, plus and, maybe even construction and, compliance. And, and and these these are coming from where the the federal government the state no, or uh, no they say that it's coming from the state but it's coming from it's coming uh, from our health it's and coming from our health department, department. Uh, yeah, she's they're, doing they're, a great a great job she really is but yeah. you have to say okay this is the fee this is going to be the you're going to charge this and this is what, what yeah. you got to do the process yeah, yeah we vote on it yeah we, the council okay. has to vote on it a lot of these things are uh, are still online you know for a while there you could be able you had the ability of going to the state to the city uh, website well this yeah. is in addition to the yes yeah, this state. is a, this it's an it's the like an amendment other layer of fees yeah. taxes so inspections what of whatever you're doing, especially like the tattoos and things like that. Multiple uh, inspections per yeah. year. Yeah. So each with a fee attached. Whatever. Yeah. Six months, they got to check a tattoo shop and make sure that's clean and uh, they're not using dirty needles and things like that's, that. That's what that one's all about. Oh, yeah, okay. It really is. Yeah. Wow. Most of them are, do, are, are you and, know, compliance. Know. And that way we were saying something about the noise ordin ordinance before. Yeah. Uh, um, you're you're going to be... If we, I'd like well, just we, like we did, we did some good work down uh, Rogers Park with it with the, with the yeah. noise. We brought the um, yeah. You just got to do it citywide now. <laughs> yeah, I, I just like quickly to say it, again with Roger with dealing with Rogers Park. I want to personally thank the police department, the traffic division, the the neighborhood unit, and because uh, they went down there again this year. It's been quiet for the last three or four years. This year it started up again, and they just laid the law down. So. It's well, been a good I, I hate to cut you off, but they're waving to me. Okay. That means it's time Way to back. get. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for coming on the show, thanks and thanks you, for uh, tuning in uh, to Danbury Dems, and uh, we'll see you next week, uh, same time, same station.